What if we had a lot of money and were surrounded by beautiful girls? His name is Ya Kong. Even though he doesn't have anything right now, Ya Kong still dreams that one day he will have a lot of money. At the age of 20, Ya Kong quit his job and joined the army. But when he left the army, he had a headache because he had no capital to invest in stocks. To make money Ya Kong took out a loan and opened a small shop. But then life was not like his dream. Ya Kong had to close the shop because he could not compete with his competitors. Even a five-year-old boy laughed in his face. Now I'm 30 years old and still a failure with no achievements or degrees. Ya Kong was very disappointed, 20 years of hard work. The only achievement he has achieved is growing older. While feeling pessimistic and depressed, Grandpa Ya Kong passed away. At my grandfather's funeral, everyone sat back and reminisced about his grandfather. Everyone felt that Mr. Ya Kong had a meaningful life. Ya Kong doesn't remember much about him. He often saw him when he was young, but later when he grew up and went to work, he rarely saw him. He still remembers that his grandfather used to give him cookies every time he returned home. His gentle face is all Ya Kong remembers about his grandfather. Every time the family gathers, there will always be questions like what job do you do? How much is the monthly salary? When will you get married? Ya Kong couldn't escape when his uncle started asking about his job. Fortunately, Ja Kang's aunt helped him explain. When he learned that Ya Kong was unemployed, his uncle still remained calm, drank a little wine and continued. The uncle asked Ya Kong to take over his grandfather's store. Hearing this, Ya Kong felt a bit confused. That store was the passion of his grandfather's whole life, but because he was busy with work, his uncle couldn't manage it. As a young man, who would want to go back to live in the countryside? But think about it, there won't be many competitors in the countryside. Then more happy and sad memories with my grandfather. Finally Ya Kong agreed and thought to himself that he would start everything again from here. Sometime later, Ya Kong started moving to her house to live. His aunt's name is Jin Hee Choi. Although she is 36 years old, she looks quite young with a bust that is rounder than her butt. That made Ya Kong a little embarrassed. If it were me, I would be the same. Ya Kong plans to stay at her house for a while before finding a new place to live. He says it's her house but actually it's the house his grandfather left behind. She started to care about Ya Kong after a long trip. She is only 10 years older than him. After knowing that Ya Kong had lunch before arriving, she led him into the room and said that this place used to be his grandfather's study. The room looked clean and very spacious. Ya Kong felt very happy and his aunt was also happy about it. Then she went out and arranged to meet Ya Kong for dinner. At this moment, he suddenly looked a bit sad. After 30 years of living in this world, I still don't have money and I don't even have a lover. It's truly such a failure. While deep in thought, Ya Kong suddenly remembered, why don't I try to browse the store a bit? As soon as I arrived at Ya Kong's store, I called my grandmother. His grandmother is also very old. Grandma was very happy seeing Ya Kong. He told her he would come here to work tomorrow so he stopped by to see this place first. His grandmother said that things often change slowly in the countryside, but he was paying attention to the sign hanging on the door that said the door was closed. After that, even though grandma insisted that she should rest, Ya Kong still wanted to help her rearrange her things. A moment later, even though those were items in cardboard boxes, our male lead still seemed quite tired. Ya Kong asked how his grandmother could do all that alone, but his grandmother said his grandfather if she can do it, so can she. His grandmother asked if he could work at the store. Ya Kong breathed heavily and replied that he could only try because if he returned to the city he wouldn't know what to do. His grandmother reassured him that she would be there and help so Ya Kong didn't need to worry too much. She also did not forget to remind him to come and greet the village chief during his free time. Suddenly the doorbell rang. A shabbily dressed girl walked in. Kicking one foot in the door, she asked if she had bought beer today. If so, please give it to her. While Ya Kong is trying to be polite, Grandma seems to be quite close to her. She reminds her to stop drinking alcohol. But with a sour face, she didn't want Ja Kang's grandmother to care too much. Then suddenly she realized Ja Kang's presence. Why is there a man here? That grandmother Ya Kong is her biological grandchild. Ya Kong also spoke up and said that from tomorrow he will work here, hoping to receive more help. With a shy face, the girl gently adjusted her shirt, so that's it. 
Ji Kang's grandmother gave her three shares of beer. Then she added, her name is Kim Hae Yong. She's a single mother, currently working as a worker and often buys beer to drink. This made Kim Hae Yong angry. She told the old lady to stop talking nonsense. Then he grabbed the shopping bag and ran out the door, looking like a duck. Hae Yong left and Ji Kang's grandmother added that every time she comes, she buys three bottles of beer. But what made Ya Kong curious was why she was surprised to see him appear. Grandmother's answer shocked Ya Kong, because there are no men in this village. While Ya Kong was still bewildered, Grandma continued to say, this village is called Da Am Thon. During the war, while the men went to war, the women ran away. After fleeing, they gathered and built a village. Because there were no men, they did everything here themselves. The strange thing is that the children here are all girls. At first they thought it was due to genetics, but after interacting with other villages, the result was still the same. After the girls grew up, the phenomenon of yin and yang weakening occurred, so the village was named Da Am Thon. Sometimes it is called Tu Yit Nam Thon. Ya Kong now realized that in the village only his grandfather and uncle were men. Most of the items sold in the store are items specifically for women. The man's nature emerged. While Ya Kong was worried that he wouldn't have enough strength to serve his sisters, his grandmother reassured him that they could do everything themselves. Scene change, it was already dark at this time. Ja Kang's aunt had already prepared a table with many dishes including stewed potatoes. The uncle started asking Ya Kong about the store and he said everything was fine. Then he continued talking about Ja Kang's girlfriend. After learning that Ya Kong didn't have a girlfriend, the uncle said that this village had no shortage of girls. Ya Kong smiled shyly, just like the name of the village. It's not surprising that she looks so beautiful. It's late. Ya Kong is lying in bed, reassuring himself that he will try his best for the next working day. Suddenly there was a knock on the door, are you sleeping yet? Dot. Ya Kong sat up, he hadn't slept yet. Outside the window was Ja Kang's aunt. She asked Ya Kong how he was feeling today and Ya Kong replied that everything was fine. His aunt continued to ask if he was confident about working here, but Ya Kong only replied that he would have to try to know. She sighed, so what? Dot. But Ya Kong didn't hear clearly and asked again and she said it was nothing, then wished Ya Kong good night and left. Ya Kong was a bit confused at the moment and didn't understand what was going on. Next morning. Ya Kong woke up and was still sleepy, seemingly still not used to waking up early. As soon as I arrived at Ya Kong's store, I saw my grandmother there. She said there were a few things she needed to prepare today so she came early. Ya Kong asked his grandmother about the job he could do. She told him that from today Ya Kong will be the manager here. While still bewildered, grandmother told Ya Kong to follow inside. As soon as he entered, Ya Kong was surprised to see that there was still another door inside the store. Ya Kong curiously asked him what he had to do in here, but his grandmother only gave a short answer, saying that you'll know when you go inside. The sound of the door closing slowly. Ya Kong was still wanting to ask her where this was but didn't hear her answer. Looking at the shelf, he saw his grandfather's books, so Ya Kong decided to come and take a look. Ya Kong just opened the book. The outside of the shop has been closed. Grandma stood there looking in as if wanting to give Ya Kong privacy. At this point, I'm a little skeptical about that book. I wonder if you are like me? Dot. Speaking of Ya Kong, he's still looking at his grandfather's books. The book says that the village has too much negative energy, so the Yin Trin ceremony must be regularly celebrated. Because grandfather Ya Kong was too old and could not continue performing the ritual, he wrote that book to instruct the next person how to perform it. He also said that if you want to perform the ritual, you must go through the cave door located in the shop to soothe the excess negative energy in the bodies of women in the village. Reading this, Ya Kong was extremely surprised. His eyes widened when he learned about the process of performing the ritual. You have to put that precious object in the hole in the wall, adding positive energy in the middle of negative energy. More precisely, it's exactly what you're thinking, there's also a girl on the other side and they have sex together to eliminate negative energy. This makes Ya Khan confused, not understanding how this good thing happened to him. Suddenly there was the sound of the door opening from the other side of the wall. Ya Khan was surprised and wondered who it was. He looked through the small crack in the door. That's Jin Hee Choi. Jin Hee Choi walked in and said, I came here to do that, 
Is there anyone there? Ya Kong still stood there bewildered, unable to believe what had just happened. Suddenly Ya Kong remembered when he was a child he once asked his grandfather. Why don't you go to Seoul and stay in the countryside? He was very surprised and laughed loudly. Then grandpa said that being here was the best place, so he didn't want to go to Seoul. Back to reality, Ya Kong now understood what his grandfather meant. On the other side, Jin Hee Choi was still slowly taking off his coat. When she shyly took off her shirt, a body like that of an 18-year-old girl appeared. Jin Hee Choi continued to ask softly, Is anyone here? Do I have to wait until I take off all my clothes to show up? Ya Kong is still in shock over here. Sweat is pouring down his face. Do we really have to do that here? He thought to himself. Speaking of Jin Hee Choi, she usually looks quite daring in shirts that don't require underwear. But now I'm shy and take off all my clothes. Moreover, her body is especially sexy. Suddenly Ja Kang's boy passed through the hole. Jin Hee Choi felt startled. She secretly thought why the other person didn't take it all off, although she was still surprised by the size. As soon as Jin Hee Choi touched it, she felt it was hard. Ja Kang was also startled when her hand touched his boy. Immediately Ja Kang reacted and sat down. Jin Hee Choi saw that and quickly asked, Are you okay? Dot. For the past 30 years, Ya Kong has only had money in his eyes, he has never interacted with any girl, and has never known that feeling. In his mind, he wanted to run away from here quickly and ask his grandmother clearly about this matter. But it was like there was a fire in his body that pushed Ya Kong closer. At this moment, Jin Hee Choi gasped. When she saw Ja Kang's boy passed by, without a piece of clothing, she hadn't seen him in a long time. She felt so good, even though it looked very long from a wall, and even though it smelled of sweat, it made Jin Hee Choi even more aroused. At the age of 20, Jin Hee Choi came to Seoul and after a few times of overindulging, she became pregnant. She returned to her hometown, from then on worked hard and no longer had contact with men. 